Hi, my name is Noah, and we are Stay Home One from ACE Austin. This is our list of team members who will be presenting the project today. Uh, our ACE mentors are listed at the bottom too. The Sea Home power plant includes two buildings, the turbine generator building and the water intake building. The water intake complex was built in two phases, 1950 and 1955. The two buildings have an art modern style that was a popular style throughout the 1930s and 40s. The turbine generator buildings and 40s. The turbine generator building is the larger of the two, and this is the interior. The turbine generator building has smokestacks with art modern graphics and alum aluminum clad canopies. The complex has not been used as a power plant since 1989 because it couldn't keep up with the growing demand for electricity in Austin. The Sea Home power plant has been designated, designated as a historic landmark for its outstanding art modern design. It became a recorded Texas historic landmark in 2007 and was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2013. The original turbine generator building was rehabilitated into an office complex with retail spaces in 2015. The water intake building has not been restored and is our project site. The buildings state and national landmark protect its original design. The city of Austin must review in any proposed changes to buildings on the national register to ensure it retains a high degree of integrity. The water intake building is along the banks of Ladybird Lake and was also built in two phases. The building is two stories with small windows on the street level. The water intake building is very simple with concrete walls, flat roofs, and no ornaments. These are some pictures of the site. And this is the interior of the water intake building. The city of Austin and private developers have redeveloped the power plant site into the Seahome district. The district is named after Walter E. Seahome, who was an electrical engineer from UT. He contributed to engineering in Austin. This district was dedicated to him in 1960 after his death. On our site, we have a total of four buildings outlined in white, two of which comprise the main part of the intake plant. There's also a small building somewhat offset from those two main buildings, as well as a circular observational tower isolated from the rest of the structures. So our site is located at the center of the Seahome District, which is often a corner of this image that you won't see, but it has a prime location to attract many people from different locations. The widely popular pedestrian and bike trails along Ladybird Lake run directly through our site, providing access to the buildings on site. There's also a Capital Metro bus station, which is only a two minute walk to the intake plant along Cesar Chavez. In terms of parking, there is not only parking directly on site, but since Seahome Power Plant underwent its own restoration and renovation, we would be able to utilize the parking built into their site across the street. Additionally, the Austin Central Library has its own underground parking structure we would also want to take advantage of. Our main goals with this project were to increase accessibility to the site, make the public park available to different groups of people, balance public and private use, keep the integrity of the building, ensure it's still cohesive with the other sea home buildings, be sustainable, and make sure it doesn't flood. From the start of our brainstorming sessions, we knew that we wanted to maintain the identity of the sea home district. We didn't want to change the exterior too much to preserve the classic architecture. And our main focus was on how we we're going to renovate the interior to integrate the sea home building with the rest of downtown Austin. The different programs we are including in our sea home project include the roof area, which has a bar and a seating area for dining, then the street level, which includes a flex space, which is a public area, which is available to be rented out for public and private events. Along the water, we have a kayak rental space, and then adjacent to the main waterside building, we have a small grab-and-go cafe, which provides snacks and drinks to people walking downtown or jogging along the trail. And then we also have the hike and bike trail, which goes along the Seahome building. Uh, the street level is the main part of the building. 
In the May building, we designed a flex space able to be rented out to different organizations or for different events. In the core part of the building, there are restrooms, stairs, and an elevator to get to the rooftop or water level parts of the building. We would like to restore and maintain all the existing windows, which provide natural light and great views to the water and neighboring public library. Uh, the two buildings are currently not connected. Uh, we decided to create a bridge to connect the two spaces together. There will be a glass sliding doors in between the buildings in order to take up less door space in the flex area. In this second building, there will be a viewing area used for talking and getting out of the main crowd. Uh, there would also be storage there for any basic needs. The water level is accessed from the stairs on each side of the intake building and the space between the two structures. At this level, we needed to design and program for potential flooding since the project site is in a floodplain. We decided to use the water level as an indoor kayak rental space with simple concrete finishes. This would prevent the need for continued maintenance in the event of a flood. The changes that we made to the building includes the addition of 10 glass garage doors to bring in natural light. The building's orientation would cause more heat gain at the south elevation. The glass would be insulated glass to provide relief from the solar radiation. We also included perforated solar film that can be used for an art installation similar to how the facade was previously uh, covered in graffiti. This provides some privacy for the kayak rent rental space. The garage doors allow the kayaks to be loaded and released from the inside of the building at four garage bays. This floor contains a small reception area near the building's core where people can rent their kayaks along with other necessary ex accessories for kayaking. This floor is accessible by elevator and stairs located in the core. The roof will receive a wood pergola that starts at the core and extends the length of the building, shading the bar and surrounding seating. In addition to the elevators, stairs, and bathrooms at the core, there is a kitchen serving the restaurant and cafe. Running along the sides of the building are glass railings for protection with wood flooring at the rooftop. Adjacent to the front of the main structure is a square building that will serve as a grab-and-go stand for food and beverages. Conveniently placed along the pedestrian's trail, it's accessible to passerbyers and kayakers slash flex space renters alike looking for a quick snack. Surrounded by trees for shade, the adjacent building stands as both a source of revenue and a resting stop, enticing visitors to check out the rest of the Sea Home site. The site plan shows that the boardwalk connects to all the trails on our site, which allows easy access to the amenities of the boardwalk and the view. There's a mural on the west end of the building, which we're going to look for local kids to make an Austin-themed mural on that side. There's a viewing tower on our site. We have a long ramp for wheelchair access. The next slide is the viewing tower which we will renovate and clean up and repaint to make it more accessible. And there's shaded seating to have a more comfortable view of the surroundings. Through our landscaping, we wanted to not only establish a visual connection with our immediate surroundings, but we also wanted to create a landscape that in an increasingly unpredictable, in unpredictable environment wouldn't require vast resources for survival. We decided that any plant we added to our site would be one native to not only Texas, but also more specifically to the Edwards Plateau, where our site is located. We chose a vast variety of native trees, shrubs, and ground cover for our plan. The first of these is the evergreen sumac, a large shrub that has a very low water requirement, does not require full shade, and whose berries provide food for birds. We also decided upon the Texas wisteria, which is a vine that has an incredibly high heat tolerance and would be grown to adorn the rooftop pergola. We also included the coral berry shrub, which is a plant well suited for erosion control, an obstacle our site presented us with. A few of the choices we made included the Texas ash tree, which also has a very low water requirement, 
is fast growing and provides good drainage to the site. There's also the yucca plant, which has very strong presence in Austin's landscaping and has also a very low water requirement as well. Finally, the turf graph we selected for our ground cover was buffalo grass, which not only is once again low water, but it is also able to survive well in full sunlight and can withstand light foot traffic. Here's a plan of our landscaping in which you can see the general placement of our chosen native plants. The circles in green are pre-existing trees we don't plan to touch. It's got a pretty good source of energy for solar-powered lights to light the boardwalk at night, and also for lighting the interior of the building. Unfortunately, this also causes the building to heat up pretty quickly, so we've decided to use tinted windows to reduce the amount of energy needed to cool the building. The trees provide natural shade that does this as well, and we've also included man-made shade structures to contribute. Lastly, in sustainability, because we're using an existing structure, there's less need for building materials. But we have done our best to think through what materials we're using, and we have put a focus on using locally and sustainably produced materials for the changes we do make. In addition to being sustainable, using an existing building is also pretty cost effective. You're saving on materials, and in this case, also creating a new source of revenue for the city. For example, the grab and go along the trails sells food and beverages, the bar on the roof does as well, the flex space is rentable, and the water level space has kayak rental available. So even though these changes are an upfront expense, in the long term this building will generate enough to make up for and potentially surpass these costs.